Let's learn how we create these alphas, and I'll give you a sense of how I walk through it. So I'm going to start by uh, opening up the main brush image that I use, because whenever I create these guys, I always create a master file. And the master file makes my life easier, because uh, I can always reference it, make changes, and all of that good stuff. So I've got three master files I'm bringing in. Let me show you some of the other ones first. So a bolt, different types of bolts. That could be more dramatic, not terribly exciting. Uh, louvers, different types of louvers. These can be used you know, for tileability, things like that. Again, not exciting. Close that one. And here's the real meat and potatoes. This is the one I really like. So you've got the stitch, which is a simple stitch. You've got a fold and stitch. That's the one we saw where this value was just too white. Double stitch. That was a better one, triple one. And here's a nice one. You'll see this in motorcycle uh, jackets, this kind of double fold and stitch really just anchored the fabric together. And uh, so now we want to take a look at how we would make this ourselves. So the first thing you do, create a new document. That new document can be whatever size you want, but uh, I'm going to stick with 512. I don't need bigger than that. Make sure you work in grayscale and make sure you're working in 16 bits. This is different than anything we saw before in our lectures. And brush alpha is really different. It needs to be 16 bit. You can't really be you can be messing around with 8 bit but you lose a lot of resolution. Not a, not a good thing. All right, so here you are. Set your gray value to 50%. Alt delete to fill. Let's set that. There we go. Now, we need to create a new layer. And this new layer is going to have the seam or the stitch on it, or the main pattern. And you can just draw a line straight up and down. I'm going to go all the way with white. Let's make sure we are working with a particular type here. Let's go hard. Pressing shift straight up and down. That should be tileable, but you can always go into offset and check it. Uh, we have to change this because the size is different. So it looks fine. Small problem, but I wouldn't worry about that. Another layer. Switch this to black. This is going to be the, the hole. Blur that. Could be using a soft brush for this as well. Put that below. Or we want that above actually. And do we want to multiply? And let's adjust the opacity. Okay. Now, right then and there, we have a basic stitch. That's going to work for us. So we're just going to save this. Uh, seam test. Could go back into uh, into ZBrush and see what kind of trouble we can get into with it. Uh, I've already saved this model and it's high res, so I'm going to be testing this out on a poly plane. Let's make poly mesh. Divide it once, twice, three, four, five. Yeah, there we go. I'm going to select the standard brush, so I have that on a hot key. I'm going to go into Alpha, Import, and bring that in. There you go. All right, now, if I just start brushing on the surface, this is what we get. So what's the value that I need to implement to make it so that it's not pushing out and 50% gray means zero displacement in the sculpt? standing right in front of you. It's in the alpha palette. It's called mid value. 
set that to 50 and there you go so looks good we're getting kind of zero displacement and then boom a shot upwards but it's just dragging that alpha through what we need is something that's going to allow me to create the tileable alpha and that you might be remembering is in stroke and roll so there you go and then remember stroke roll and roll distance it's going to allow you to make that tighter all without having to go to Photoshop so this is pretty useful pretty straightforward and uh, you just need to duplicate it off to one side to be able to create it but how do you save this so it's constantly there in your configuration so make sure the settings are where you want and then you go through the exact same process I'm going to go through right now so we're over here brush palette we're going to press clone remember you press clone so that you don't overwrite the model you currently have in ZBrush and then once you've pressed clone you save as and save this as whatever I'm just going to save it as delete so I remember to delete it now fine fair enough but what if you want a custom icon see each one of these guys has a little custom icon that describes it well you can select an icon so this nice little button right here and what I do nowadays is I'll just select an icon and I'll select the alpha so there you go it's pretty straightforward I know exactly what that brush is what it does and um, and I'm good to go from there now last tip about this if you save the brush in the default Z startup folder brush preset then it will start with ZBrush you just have to save it in this folder up here so Z startup and then brush presets and those start with ZBrush so ZBrush will look at that folder add anything that's in that folder and uh, when you start ZBrush and you'll have access to it so that's a little primer on creating custom brushes custom alphas tileable alphas and uh, now we need to get on to zippers and things of that nature